Hello everyone. Um, in this video that I hope to keep as short as possible, I want to explain a little bit about how to use the new tool that I've released uh, for calculating vision blocks in Beat Saber mapping. Um, now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about how this tool works, but the main difference with uh, other th tools that have existed before is that uh, I am running kind of a simulation of the geometry of the game in this um, tool, so it, it will give you more precise and detailed uh, numbers that will open up possibilities that we previously were too afraid to consider, or at least that's the idea. Um, but the details for that are long, I'm not gonna go through many of those, I will mention some things, uh, but for now I just want to tell you how to use it. So the main thing is how to access it, right? So the first, the, as the first thing. Uh, so this is the URL as of now, uh, It's I've posted it in Azure, um, that may or may not last, depends, I'm not sure, it was just the easiest option, but this is the URL that you can access it on right now. So, if you open it, uh, this is the first page that you will open, and it's the page that I expect most people to be using most of the time, and it was the main vision that I have. Now, these other pages here uh, have their use, and I'll explain that in this video, but they should be only for particular situations, and normally you want to use just the vision summary. So. Let's jump into this and how we're supposed to fill this in and understand the information that we get. And the first thing that you need um, to be able to calculate vision blocks for your map is a map. So it's important to note that before you use the application, you should have your map set up with the most important parameters because that determines how vision is going to work in our map. And that's exactly what you should do. So this is the map we're going to be thinking of. So the main values that I care about here is the BPM of the map. Um, the node jump distance and the half jump duration, so in this case the 1.4 uh, here. So I need to read those values and take them to the app. So what we do is we come to the web page and we introduce the map parameters. Um, so our map is 140 bpm, it has 18 node jump speed. This is actually not that relevant for vision blocks. Um, I'll talk a little bit, but it's a bit of a myth that higher node jump speed makes things more visible. and this program will show us how that happens. It will make things more readable, but not avoid vision blocks normally, eh, uh, or not by much. Anyway, my half jump, the half jump distance is 1.4. Then you have the plier height, minimum, maximum. I recommend you just leave them here to be able to work for many different players, but you can change it if you want. It will basically give you safety ranges for all players within this range. And then you have these tolerance ranges. What these are, are subjective parameters having to do with how much do we want to see the blocks or for how long in multiple ways. I'll explain this later, uh, but generally they have the full values that you don't want to change. You have this button here that you should click after introducing the map parameters that will update a couple of them. Now if you have extreme maps with very short reaction times or very high node jump speeds or something like that, you might want to tweak all of this manually. Uh, but most of the time the default parameters after clicking this should be good enough for simple things. So after that we just click calculate vision, it takes a little bit, uh, a few seconds, and it will give, give us uh, a very long summary. And I'll explain what that means, because that was going to be your main friend when mapping, or that's uh, what I expect it will be. So as we can, you can see we have a lot of information here. So this information is hierarchical. It starts from the top, from the most general situation, and it goes more precise. So, you can see here it says save ranges on any posture. This means these ranges here work for any two blocks in this map, regardless of the relative position, uh, the posture that I'm in, that the player is in, or anything else. Um, if, the ma if the two blocks are more than 1.25, uh, bits away, then they should be fine in terms of vision. Similarly, we'll have a similar situation for walls, and it happens to be the same number. Um, now, you may want to get a bit more precise, and probably you do, especially if you're using this tool, so then we go deeper and we add more details to it. The first thing that you can select is the, pos the posture of the player. So we have centered, leaning to the left, leaning to the right, squatting, squatting, to the squatting and leaning to the left, squatting and leaning to the right. Now, one thing to clarify is that left and right here are not symmetric the way that they're presented. The way this program presents the data, it's assuming that the blocks are on the left. So leaning left means leaning towards the block, and leaning right means leaning away from the blocks or the or the walls. Now, if you have your blocks or walls on the right, then the values you want to be using is the, the values for left 
but you know with asymmetric positions. But those the the, num the numeric ranges will, will be those, um, if that makes sense. So given a position, a posture, sorry, we have some general safety ranges which say okay for any two blocks as long as the player is centered, if it's more than 1.1 bits apart, then it will be fine. And you notice this is a little bit lower than here. And this is because uh, the only situations in which, in which this is not fine is actually when the player is squatting and into the left. Then there might be some situations where you need up to 1.25 for it to be fine. Um, and you could dig into the details of why that is. Uh, it has to do with the spawning animation, but uh, anyway, uh, so that's the situation. Uh, now for walls, you still need 1.25. Um, even if you're centered. Um, so this gives you basically saying if you assume that a point in the map the player is centered and you put two blocks more than 1.1 bits apart then they will be fine. But you may want to be more precise so then you can go further on. And then you have these seven uh, families of situations. Four of them are block situations and three of them are wall situations. Of course, it's 44 and 4, sorry, eight of them wall situations. Uh, the most typical ones would be hard vision blocks, inlines, uh, full walls, and squat walls. Um, but you probably will want to use the other ones. So let's focus on hard vision blocks for now. These are basically face blocks, right? So for face blocks, uh, indeed you need 1.1 if you want to be completely safe. But if you go down, you get specific combinations. And you will see that you have some safe ranges uh, that appear uh, in certain positions. For example, these ones only need 0 0.94 bits. When they are right behind each other, which may feel surprising, but it does make sense because of the way the um, nodes disappear and where they are, and the spawn animation, and, and you, the fact that you will see the one behind uh, from be, from the over the, the the front one and stuff like that. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I'll tell you how to investigate these things a little bit better if you really need to. Um, now, for example, if we go to inlines, we'll see that. 0 0.58 bits is more than enough um, to avoid any inline vision block. This is what the parameters that we have, which of course can be changed. Um, so it's less than the 1.1 bits that we need for um, hard vision blocks. And then you have all the par particular parameters. Now another thing is you can change the posture while keeping the, 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 the family. So for example, you have full walls, you have um, this situation here, you need 1.25 bits for this to be visible because that node is really hidden behind the wall. But of course, if you have a wall like that, the player is probably going to be leaning. So if you're leaning, it's actually enough to have 0 0.81 bits. So probably this value is a lot more relevant because you're probably going to be expecting the player to lean on this uh, situation. And that's the general summary. Now I want to focus on some specific details um, and also on the, some of the other pages and some of the parameters that I've left uh, behind. Now, in order to understand some of the more tricky bits of this, uh, we want to look at some specific relative positions of objects that give us some funny, interesting uh, values. So, for example, we go to full walls here and we consider only this case where we only have a central wall uh, and we want to be centered. You will notice that you have a safe range here. So it says if the objects are less than 0 0.1 bits away, then it's fine. Now, once they're more than that, they're not fine anymore until 1.25 bits. Now, if you're clever, you'll see why this is. Uh, when the objects are so close to each other, you can see the node on the side of the wall and it won't block it. Now, of course, that depends slightly, less than you would think, on the node jump speed and stuff like that, uh, and on the more importantly on the tolerance ranges that we set here. But it's interesting information, right? And also, as you can see, if we say leaning right, so leaning away from the objects, suddenly this value gets reduced naturally because now we're more angled to, to have the wall block us. If we're leaning into the objects, however, uh, this actually disappears completely. And these two, these pairs of objects will never vision block so long as you're on the left. Now, the problem is you probably hit the wall if you do that. So it's not something that's likely to be very useful, but the information is there. But I know some of you, you're going to be skeptical and say, well, how can I trust you? Uh, well, there are approximations going on in this uh, application, uh, but a lot of the things that, are, that the application is saying, even if they feel surprising to you, will often be correct, or at least somehow correct or correct in a way that you didn't expect. Uh, in this case, they're definitely correct. So I have a test map here, and you can see I have 
uh, a wall and a block first on the same time, then uh, this is 0 0.05 bits apart, 0 0.1 bits apart, 0 0.15 bits apart, and 0 0.2 bits apart. Um, just so that you can see, and this map has exactly the, the parameters that we set. And I'm going to show you how this looks in game and how actually 0 0.1 is a good cutting point for that interaction. Now, one thing before I, I saw you in game, though, one thing I didn't explain properly um, is that when you say we say bits apart, it means uh, you know the the distance in time of the objects. So here, these are 0 0.2 bits apart. So if I go to the um, to the program, it says, well, if I want to avoid a, a phase vision block, I want to put it 1.25 bits apart. It means this will be vision blocked, right? Hold on, this will be vision blocked. But this will not because it's in the safe range. So 1.25 bits, you know, this is one bit and then a quarter of a bit. So that's exactly what it means. The ranges that it means there. So these are 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2. So let's look at those um, in game. So here we are in game on FPFC. This is our map, and we're gonna check this. I'm gonna check it at 50% speed just so we can see the situations. Uh, more slowly but it doesn't change the vision at all when we slow down so it, it's still the same thing um, so according to the app and the parameters that we have the first three uh, pairs are fine the block can be seen uh, next to the wall but the last two are not fine the block is, uh, the, the block is blocked by the wall um, now I think that's pretty accurate but as you will see it's quite subjective so this one is definitely fine this one is pretty much fine i'd say this is fine still but this is starting to be problematic and this is definitely problematic in my opinion now definitely this is subjective and that is why we have those tolerance ranges that you can tweak if you want to be less flexible or more flexible with these things i just have the default values that i probably will still tweak over time but I'm pretty happy with right now in all my experiments that they are um, quite acceptable. So let's talk about the tolerance ranges. I'll not spend a lot of time on them. You have these little eyes that try to describe what they are. I'll give you a brief summary now so you can understand this. It's basically the first parameter is this one, then you have these three which have to do with hard vision blocks, and then you have these three which have to do with inlines. Um, and they represent the same thing, but they make sense to be separate because we are a lot more tolerant with inlines than we are with hard vision blocks. So the first parameter, relevant vision time, says, well, seeing a block when it's this less than this close in time to us, so it's less than 100 milliseconds to us, doesn't really count because we already have to hit it. So I have it on 100 milliseconds. You can lower it. Probably some players will find that this is a lot. But basically, it means don't count anything below this. Don't consider it as vision in some sense. Um, the second parameter is probably the most important really and it says what's the latest time that I can see the block for the first time as compared to when I have to hit it. Um, so basically 500 says I have to see the block uh, or the uh, yeah, so the object behind at least 500 milliseconds before I have to hit it for the first time. So the first time I see the object has to be at least this amount of time. Conversely, this says when ha when is the latest time that I can see the object for the last time, excluding this uh, kind of uh, grace period, of course. So it says apart from this grace period, I have to see the object at least 200 milliseconds before having to hit it for the last time. I can't lose vision earlier than this over the object because then I, I forget that it's there or it's hard to time it, right? You can arguably take this to zero for extreme cases. I think the only one that you really can't is this one, but that will be a little bit weird because then you might have a block that you see for a second uh, at the beginning, but then you don't see as it approaches you. And finally, we have the minimum process time, which is for how long does the object need to remain in vision to be considered that I have been able to process it. It's called process time because it's how long does it take for your brain to process that there is a block that you need to hit. And this is again excluding this time, I believe. I'm not sure right now. Uh, maybe it's not. No, it, no, no, I don't think it is. No, it does include this time. So, so this, this time is relevant primarily for the maximum. Um, so this one, this one says 
uh, how much time does it need to remain in vision for to ensure that you've uh, processed it? So as you can see, the parameters that I have by default here are pretty safe. So this is saying uh, 500, so it means 500 milliseconds for the first time I see it has to leave at most 200 millise milliseconds before I see it, and it has to remain in vision a full 350 milliseconds. So it's pretty safe. If you want to be a little bit more cheeky with it, you can uh, change these numbers and make the ranges smaller. Now the ranges here are the same, but for inlines. So it, it this changes depending on which relative positions of the blocks you have. Now for inlines, we are a lot more lenient. So we say the first time I can I have to actually see the object behind can be just a hundred milliseconds before I have to hit it. I don't really care when's the last time I see it. I, it's enough to know that it's there, and I only need two hundred milliseconds to process it. Uh, and we can change this, right? In particular, we can say we really don't care about inlines. So if you want to say anything goes for an inline, just change this value to zero and this go change value to zero. And this means all inlines are fine, so long as we see them at least uh, once. I think that's what basically it, it, the system calculates. Um, we can also say, uh, you know what? Actually, this is way too far. I'm happy to see it uh, 375 milliseconds before I have to hit it, and I also only need 250 um, time, milliseconds to process it. And then, I mean, we haven't calculated yet, but I want to. I want you to look at some situations. So, for example, this value here is 1.11, and I believe it's going to change. Similarly, this 0.94 here is probably going to change. So we can calculate the vision with the new parameters. It's going to give us more larger safe ranges because we've reduced the constraints, right? We said we can, we are fine seeing the object later. We don't need so much time to see it, and honestly, inlines are fine in in any case. So we'll see what the result of this is. Okay, there we go. So as you can see now, uh, for center position, um, it's enough to have the object 0 0.86 bits apart to be considered acceptable. This one here has been reduced to 0 0.71. And if we go to inlines, it says just everything's fine, you know, it's all good, inlines are always good. Um, and of course it will change um, some of the other things uh, with the walls and so on. Because it's actually doing simulations of the geometric positions of the objects over time and as they move and so on and so forth and the spawn animation and all sorts of stuff. And saying, okay, if you don't need to sit, see them for so long and you not, don't need to see them so early, then you can actually put them closer and it will still be fine. So what I want to do right now is explain to you uh, these other pages and what their use may be. Uh, and as their name suggests, so we'll focus on the first two, block block and wall block for specific positions. Um, they're about specific positions. So what that means is, say you're looking at the summary for your map, and uh, there's a specific pos position that you are kind of a little bit um, iffy about, you know, a little bit um, you don't understand, you want to play around with, you're gonna see how far you can get, uh, and it's a little bit annoying to have to recalculate everything every time and not see results. So this, those two pages can help with that. So for example, consider this situation here, right? It says we only need 0 0.23 bits to see this when we're leaning away from the blocks, from the objects, uh, with these parameters. So we might want to see, play with that. So we go here to specific positions, wall block, because it's a wall block situation. We enter our parameters. Um, we're going to stay center for now, and then we have a, f a, a wall that remains on the far left the entire time. Uh, it don't care about how much duration it has, so we have far left bottom um, block, and then the parameters here are uh, the inline parameters that we have, which were something like this. You can tweak them a little bit. These pages are not so optimized because I expect people will not use them very often, but I will optimize them a little bit. So when we're centered, we need 0 0.36 bits to see the situation properly. This is kind of an inline wall on the side, but when we go to the right, it's actually 0 0.23. But it's still kind of 0 0.23 is close to 0 0.25. It's nearly one fourth of a bit. We say, okay, can we make this more visible? For example, say we want to increase the no jump speed. Will that help with the inline? Say we want to go all the way to 20. Well, no. <laughs> and we can go to 22. I think we have to go all the way to 26 or something for even that for that to matter even a little. No jump speed matters for vision, but very slightly so. On 16, it was a little bit worse, but as you can see, the effect is very very small. So that can be a good way to check whether no jump speed will help. But I can tell you, it doesn't help most of the time. Uh, not with straight up vision. It's it helps with clarity, but that's something that 
readability that we something we're not considering here. Um, but there can be other things that we can check. For example, say we're uh, considering something like a squat wall, right? So a wall that goes from height uh, to, sorry, from height to to the top. That would be a squat wall. Um, spans all over from the far left to the far right, and we are squatting. And then we have a top, uh, the left top object, for example, right? So we need 0 0.33 bits away from the wall to be able to see this. With this node down speed, we can check if the node down speed does something. Again, it doesn't really. But what we can check is how much the height affects this, which in this case will be quite relevant. So for someone very short, actually we only need 0 0.17 bits. But for someone really tall, we'll need nearly half a bit. So this can be pretty enlightening as to how height matters for this. And then we can play with things like what if I move the block a little bit to, you know, if it's on the further away, does it change anything? I don't think it does in this case. Um, but, you know, we can check these things. Um, you know, what if the, the wall lasts a little bit? Then you have even less time because, of course, it's taking over 0 0.25 bits, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I could spend my my entire life on this, but hopefully you see the point of this is a quicker way to play with one posi uh, position of objects and see how things vary around them. Now moving on to specific positions and times, this is for when you want even more precision, and it will tell you not just so you, here you have the the time parameter, so how far the objects are in time. And instead of giving you ranges of how far they need to be to be in vision, it will tell you exactly what happens with those two objects uh, when they have we are at that time. So it's kind of a debug sanity checking situation. So um <coughs> sorry, so if we are for example centered and we want to consider a situation where we had a, a middle left wall that goes from top to bottom. Uh, and then a far left middle row block, so so we can see in parallel. We knew that when we, it was a 0.1, uh, the game considered that to be parallel, but then we want a 0 0.2 distance, then that didn't work anymore. So we want to see, okay, what's going on there, right? So if we click this, it gives us this a little bit more precise information. It tells us exactly what happens with those objects. So it says, um, when the second object spawns the block, it's not blocked by the wall. Now, 388 milliseconds later, the object becomes vision block because they're close enough that the wall goes in front of the object. And then that's 203 milliseconds before the wall reaches you. So you have a whole 388 milliseconds from the moment the objects spawn until they reach you to see them. And that's why the game was the, the application was considered that to be fine. If we reduce us to 0 0.01, we'll see that this is nearly the entire time of the object. But if we go to 0 0.25, for example, then we'll see we only have 16 milliseconds to see it after it spawns, and then somewhere in between we have 0 0.2, which is 141 milliseconds, which is probably not enough. Um, so this can help you debug, okay, why these ranges, what's going on here, what's happening, and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit even more precise than, than the other one by having to indicate the specific time in this case. And finally, the very last thing that I will do, this video is already longer much longer than I wanted, is talk about the advanced configuration parameters. As it says here, it says not recommended. I don't recommend that you change this unless you really know what you're doing. You really should know what you're doing if you change this. I, if, in fact, this here, I you can't change because these are constants from the game. So the, these are, the game behaves like this, we know this, so there's no reason to change them. But they're here for your information because they're kind of relevant to the calculations. Uh, but you can change this because they are kind of uh, approximations or estimations that uh, should be good enough but if you want to change them you can change them so we have for example things about posture so this one indicates how much our head moves to the side when we lean so I'm going here based on fitness mappers um, estimations which is that it's approximately one whole lane which is 0 0.6 meters if you want to lower that because you're expecting players to lean less or you want to be more lenient or increase it or something you can change it here similarly how far down does your head go when we squat uh, 0 0.5 now the squat lean distance is because when we lean while squatting we don't move horizontally so much because it's a, a more difficult posture so it's a separate value and I'm going with 0 0.4 here you can change it if you want to now, slightly more complicated than that is the block size. Now, as it says here on the information, 
the block itself is actually 0 0.5 meters but most of the time you don't care if the corner of a block blocks the corner of another block so this is basically the effective size of the block the part that matters of the block in terms of vision blocks I've experimented with this value and I found that 0 0.35 is a good value and gives you relevant um, values changing this value even later will change results quite a bit so you may want to experiment and if you think you found a better value you can actually tell me because you might want to change the fail value but my experiment said that 0 0.35 is a pretty good value even more convoluted is the spawn animation threshold which simply has to do with the spawning animation and when exactly do we consider that the optic has finished spawning now this shouldn't matter most of the time but if you put it's more to do with performance versus correct results so it has to do with some some simplifications that i do read this try to understand it ask me if you want but you really shouldn't need to change this it, it, this is tricked through experimentation and it's not it, don't change it um but it has to do with when we consider that an object has finished spawning changing it without knowing what you're doing will break it Finally, the time granularity is similar to the spawn animation threshold. This says how what is the smallest amount of time that we consider in seconds. So in this case, it's five milliseconds. You may want to increase this or reduce this. Increasing it means uh, the process takes short, takes less time to run, uh, but reducing it means you get more precise values. Up to you. Uh, 0 0.05 should be 0 0.005 should be more than enough because it's not too slow and it gives pretty precise results. But you can change it, and then you have things about. Um, the actual uh, size of things in game which we have checked that is absolutely correct this is exactly how the game behaves most of the time don't touch this don't modify it it's only there if you really want to play with it